hey, hey, everyone. Welcome back to another amazing, you know, I always think my shows are amazing, but welcome to another amazing episode of the Black Girl Heal Her series. Have you all been enjoying these nuggets that we have been putting down? It has been a blessing to my life, and I am hoping that it is blessing you just the same. Now, don't forget, every Thursday, we are running these Black Girl Heal Her series where I'm bringing in my special guest, and we're going to talk about some component of healing, because I do believe we are all on this continuous healing journey. But don't forget, on Saturday, September 21st, we have the second annual The Black Girl Heal Her Virtual Summit. Woo, 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 woo. So you need to make certain that you come back on September 21st and you are locked in and you've got your notepad and you've got your pen and you get ready to, to take down all of the gems that my guest speakers for the virtual summit are going to be dropping in, okay, they're going to be giving it to you. So you want to make sure you pick it up. So I've got a special treat for today's segment. Uh, it's a new person that I've, I've never interviewed before. And her and I actually um, didn't even really officially meet uh, until we had like a, a phone conversation. But she's a treat. She's a fellow registered nurse like myself. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring her up to the stage. Come on, everyone. Give it up to my new friend, Dewan Kelsey. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Blessings to you. I am so grateful that you decided to say yes. I love when people say yes to the ask to be on the Black Girl series. And today's segment, we are um, in our Heal Her series. So usually my podcast, The Black Girl Encourage Her, we are bringing forth encouragement and we're just talking about a little bit of everything. But God has blessed us with these little spinoffs. I swear I'm like a different world or something like that. I have all of these different spinoffs and uh, this one just so happens to be The Black Girl Heal Her. So who better to bring on but a fellow nurse to come in and talk to us a little something something today. Now, Dewan, I need you to introduce yourself to all of us. Absolutely. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you for the invitation and thank you for lending your voice and your platform to heal because we know that um, in order us in, in order for us to own, not only better our communities and better our families, that we got to heal ourselves first. So first of all, I, I appreciate the work that you are doing. So I am Dwan Kelsey. I am a nurse practitioner in the state of North Carolina. I have done a whole lot of work um, from academia to research to clinical. And I um, presently, I work in the hospice and palliative care mm. arena. And I've been in that arena for a number of years. And, and, and being in that space, in that end of life space, definitely has had a personal as well as a professional impact um, on me. So I am happy to um, be with you today. I'm also um, a co-chair of the Anthony Lewis Foundation for Brain Tumors um, that was founded in 2023. And I know we're going to get into that in just a moment, but that's me. That's, that's a little bit of me. I love it. And she just so happens to be a part of the Divine Nine. You know, we show mad love to the Divine Nine when they come and stop in. Delta Sigma Theta in the house, right? Rocking with the Zaytas. Right? We do get along. Absolutely. Um, all Absolutely. Everyone. <laughs> Sisters all day. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, sometimes there's this rivalness, but rivalness is not always a bad thing. It, it keeps you on your toes. It keeps you pushing to live out your, your purpose and your grace. So it's not always a bad thing, but I'm glad to have you here with us today. So let's talk a little bit about, let's, let's go a little personal. What would you say your own heal her journey looks like? Oh, that's a good, that's a good question. That's mm -hmm. a deep question. And 
off the cuff, I would say my own heal her journey is to understand who I am. Mm -hmm. um, I think oftentimes we are defined by our parents, by our experiences, by how we grew up and those things that, you know, were are special and mm -hmm. makes us who we are. Mm -hmm. But then the question goes a little deeper is, but really do we know who we are? So when you take that away at the core, yes, you know, who are we? And so I actually had to go on that journey and I'll share a personal story with mm -hmm. with, with you is that I, I had to learn a few years ago, I have a, I have a daughter mm -hmm. and it was through her is I learned that a lot of my decision making was formed from a spirit of fear. Mm. And I had to, and, and, and God actually gave me a fearless individual uh. to teach me that because my yeah. daughter was the, I can do anything at the age of three. I can jump off of this wow. thing and not get yeah. hurt. Yeah. I can slide down the biggest slide and I'm only this high, but yeah. I can do it. And um, she, you know, I, 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 I my no, I had to like really examine my no. Like, why are you actually saying no to her? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. is it from a safety perspective or is it really from a fear? Yeah. Um, and my personal fear, not really a fear of her. Um, mm -hmm. And so that that was my most recent journey as far as healing is that I had to learn. And, and, and as I did the work, I realized that that fear came from home mm -hmm. growing up. My, my, my parents had a spirit of fear, nothing bad, wonderful folk, but they had a spirit of fear yeah. and that led into my fear. Mm -hmm. And so um, I had to do the work. Yeah. Um, and it's been a wonderful journey. It's been very enlightening but it's been a wonderful journey. So the decisions that I make now are like, I really take an opportunity to stop and say, okay, okay, is this fear or what is this um, mo mo moving forward? So that healing process is, you know, um, it's powerful. Yeah. Um, and it takes some work and it takes time to just kind of spend time with yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and be and be open because, you know, when, when you open yourself up, you got to be ready yes. for what's going to come out. So I, I would say that was my number one heal her moment. Absolutely. And um, I thank you for your openness and sharing um, with us all because we're all on a journey. You know, no, no one is excluded from this. We're all on a journey to be better to heal ourselves, like you said, from the past traumas, from the past experiences, because that might have served us back then. Correct. But it, it, it could be hindering us where we are currently. Absolutely. So you just so happen to be your, on, on your own personal heal her journey. But then the work that you do. So I think as registered nurses, I think we we stay in the heal her journey because now we're interacting with other people and we're helping them to get to that That's place that. as well. So share with us why you decided to become a nurse. Like, why did you enter into this? Because it is a heal her profession. Well, I'll say my initial, when I was in high school, and actually I, I can remember before high school, I wanted to be a pharmacist. Mm. And I, ooh, I was so excited about being, you know, and that was pre-websites and all that. So that's when you had to, to literally write into the school okay. for the information. And so um, I worked at a pharmacy when I was in high school and, you know, that was just going to be my route until that package came in and said, well, you know, part of the curriculum in, in college was zoology and botany, mm -hmm. you know, like, mm, I ain't trying to do all that. So let that me choose, let me, now, choose right? another profession. Right, let me choose yeah. another profession. And at the time I have a cousin um, 
that was in Atlanta. She's about four years older than I, I am. And she was in nursing school. Okay. And I kind of witnessed her journey. I was four years younger. So when she was in high, high school, I was younger. When she was in college, I was in high school. So I was able to kind of see her journey. And I loved it. You know, I loved her journey. And I was like, well, you know, I can do this. And so that really was kind of what led me into the nursing profession. And so once getting in it, I loved it. I was bedside nursing um, at a major hospital for a number of years before I decided to go back um, to school to get my master's. And so I've done bedside nursing. I worked at the correctional um, facility for a while. I was the HIV nurse um, there while I was at while I was in grad school. And so that kind of, you know, that journey into nursing um, has been very special for me. Like, and, and as you say, nurses, we all know that nurses are very special yes. and nurses are always ready to jump in and heal. It doesn't yeah. matter. And, and, you know, that healing takes place not only in the hospital or facility, but, you know, it could take place at the grocery store. Anywhere. And, no, anywhere. anywhere. Folk fall yeah. and they're a nurse. Yes. Um, and so, you know, <laughs> we are all always ready to jump Absolutely. in. So that was my journey into the nursing profession. And you're right, says we listen, we we don't even know how to turn it off sometimes. I yeah. remember one time I was walking in the street, me and my kids was on a day trip going to Carvel's. I was taking my babies to get some ice cream and some ladies start falling out right in front of my child. I was like, Lord have mercy. And now I have to go into nurse mode and I had to make certain they were good and, and then give directions to everybody else to help out with this lady. Cause I'm like, I've been wrapped to Carvel's baby. <laughs> um, but we don't, we, there's no, there's there's no on off switch. That's like right. we are constantly on That's and right. it can be a little draining, you know, to yeah. constantly be on, you know, you've got your friends and your family calling you up, you know, it hurts when I do this, what should I do? Right. You, know, right. uh, you know, I've gotten in, into taxi cabs and the cab, you know, once they find out what you do, Lord have mercy. Now they want to tell you everybody, they want to get a quick diagnosis for any and everybody. That's right. Know. <laughs> But it is a rewarding profession nonetheless. So I'm 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 glad it's always fun when I meet someone that uh is in the profession, who loves the profession. And you also had some some training academia, you've done some teaching, things of that nature as well. Yes, I have. So um I've I worked for um UNC Chapel Hill in the mm -hmm. research, and so I was able to publish, be published, so be an author. And since being in the hospice and palliative care world, I've been able to do, to be part of a research project and the research and, and published, you know, that way. So this profession has been wonderful for me. It has, it has opened up many, many, many doors, not only on the professional level, but then also on the social and the, because see, I meet wonderful folks like you. Yeah, See, this, <laughs> this profession really opens up many, many doors. And I will say it opens up many, many doors when you allow it to open yes. up those many doors because we have to be at the table um, in whatever capacity that may look like. But we have to make ourselves present. Mm -hmm. um, even if you're doing bedside nursing, you can make yourself present. Yes. You have to be there. And so um, I am grateful for the opportunity to have entered into such a profession that, that is so vast mm -hmm. and that covers so much and folks do so much under the under the umbrella yes. of, of nursing and the and the impact and the power that it has not only in our you know in our local communities but just nationwide worldwide I mean nurses if it wasn't for nurses Come on. I'm not sure how this world will function um, mm -hmm. when you think about, you know, even when you think about it from an administrative position, if you really pay attention to who are the COOs and the CEOs of these hospital systems, mm -hmm. a lot of them are nurses Yeah, um, because we get it. We, 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 we get the bedside, how to care, how to manage, how to delegate. That's nursing 101. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And then you couple that with just understanding business, you, it equals total success. And so, um, just this nursing profession has been a wonderful, um, a wonderful opportunity for me as well as others. I totally agree. And um, speaking of which, you know, it is a great opportunity, especially if you do the right thing and you're you're out there and you're communicating and networking. And that's where our paths had crossed at the Nurse Boss Summit. And yeah. we have a mutual friend, uh, Mrs. Tammy Lewis. Yeah. We, we have her as a mutual friend. And she puts together these conferences to empower nurses and shows them that there are different avenues. Cause that's one thing that I love about the Nurse Boss Summit is that you get a chance to see the different realms of nurses. So you have nurses who are writing books, you've got nurses who are owning businesses um, and, and we're just, we're so blended and we're so mixed there. There's the travel network and there's the, like there's so many different opportunities um, and, and nursing, we just take those skill sets as our foundation, but it can really blend in with um, pretty much everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. We can own businesses. We can mm -hmm. be CEOs of corporations. Uh, we, can, we can have private practices. Like there's so much that there's nothing that a nurse can Absolutely. Do, right? <laughs> so let's get into it. So the reason why I asked you to come here today is because of your connection with uh, Tammy. Uh, Tammy is near and dear to my heart. She's one of my social media friends that actually became one of my live and in-person uh, friends. I do not get a chance to hug on her as much as I would like to, but we're going to have to rectify that. But when you are sitting in someone's circle, when you are, um, you get to glean and thank goodness for the social airways, because it does allow us to connect and build friendships and build mm -hmm. communities just the same. So tell me a little bit about your connection with, with Tammy. Yes. Tammy Lewis, yes. there are not many, I cannot put many, Tammy is just wonderful yes. in general, just as an individual. And I am blessed that I have known Tammy now for probably 20 years. Nice. Um, I remember when she was first she introduced to me and she was starting her um, home health agency. Yeah. Um, at the time I was starting a diabetes clinic. So we were brand new to the entrepreneurial world. Um, but I have sat on the sidelines and I've watched Tammy and it has been a wonderful journey to watch her watch favor. Mm. And, but also how she has taken the torch and has to run with it. Yes. Tammy is one of those people that is able to mobilize. Mm -hmm. She's also one of those people that if you need her, she is there. Facts. Um, she has no problems in saying, I say, Tammy. I was thinking about, and I can say, thinking about whatever. She'll say, okay, give me five minutes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Right, the phone ring five minutes later. I got such and such, she's going to call you, yes. or she's going to email you. you like, how many people do you yes. know? And it, and it's not people that live in our state. It can be anybody or across anywhere. the United States of America. Of America. Yes, yes. So, um, I just want to mention how, how, you know, really how grateful I am yes. that Tammy Lewis is in our lives. Yes. Um, because our lives are so much better mm -hmm. um, because Tammy is in it. And for the Nurse Boss Summit, I'll just tell this short story. In 2020, it was 2019. Yes. Tammy calls me in 2019 and she says, what do you think about? I want to do like a conference or something and you know where nurses can come together and just kind of network and you know if they on you know they're 
entrepreneurs. What do you think about that? So I said, oh, I think, you know, I think that'll be great. You know, well, that's, you know, we, what you need? She yes. says, well, I've already put money down at the Raleigh Convention Center. Come on. Play no games. <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> and so that's Tammy. Yeah. When Tammy does something, she does it and she does it well. And we all benefit from Tammy. Yes. <laughs> from, from, from Tammy. So you mentioned the Nurse Blossom, and I'm just going to put a plug into the Nurse Come Blossom. with it. Come with it. In, Mar in March. I think it's going to be the last weekend in March, and it will be held in Charlotte, um, North Carolina. So more details to come. But um, if you are a nurse, entrepreneur, you thinking about it, you want to meet somebody, you need to be, you know, you, I need a, a little push. Um, I would highly, highly recommend that you join us in March. Um, Facts, because I'll be in the for, house. I will definitely be in the house. So you all who are connected to me, you keep your eyes and your ears open, check them emails, make certain you read them because I'll be sending out lots of information about that. Because I think as far as nurses in general, like sometimes when you work bedside, um, for me, I did home care. I did uh Bet I did the bedside, I did home care, I did education, I did corporate. So sometimes you get a little stagnant feeling and you may not always want to go to a different field because you've gotten comfortable, but it's a good idea to just see what the possibilities are. Are. And that's what I've gained from the Nurse Boss Summit is that there are possibilities. So even if you're not a nurse, I think it's a strong conference for entrepreneurs in general. I think it's a strong conference for uh, those who are in the healthcare industry just to see what everybody else is doing. What are those unique qualities and, and businesses that are being birthed? from uh, different individuals in the health profession. So I think it's a good place for everyone to be, just to, to learn, to network, and just to be in the, the space. Now, one of the things that I did want to talk about, and the reason why we're just having this like kind of lighthearted, happy-go-lucky conversation, we love it on our sister friend, Tammy. Love you, girl. Uh, but we do need to talk about something really, really serious that uh, is a part of the Heal Her journey. Dewan, can you share with us a little bit about glioblastoma? Sure, sure. Glioblastoma is a type of brain cancer. It, it falls under the umbrella of what we call um, gli gliomas which are brain tumors of the brain. And so what happens is glioblastoma, there's many, that's an astrocytoma, there's, you know, other types of, of glios. But glioblastoma is one of the most aggressive types of brain tumors um, that we have. We know that it typically affects males, um, usually in the third and fourth decade of life. Um, but women women can get it as well, but the average is for the male population. And so what happens in a glio, oftentimes it just kind of shows up. The symptoms can be changes in mental function. It can be seizures, speech difficulties, nausea and vomiting. However, it doesn't happen like immediately. And so people can be experienced these things unknowingly and over a period of time that they, you know, they don't know that. But because of the aggressiveness of the tumor, that while you may not have noticed the symptoms, or if you've noticed the symptoms at all, this tumor continues to grow. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's that's in a nutshell, you know, the, the, the glioblastoma tumor. Um, headaches is another thing, but you know, that's very, subjective because mm -hmm. you know folks get headaches all the time mm -hmm. and um and i have to apologize because the the vent came on so uh -huh. really just <laughs> blowing <laughs> right now uh, <laughs> but um so so that's a little bit about glio i will share that we are talking about 
the foundation, the Anthony Lewis Foundation. Mm -hmm. And that's Tammy's husband. All right, good. So you gave us you gave us a good definition of what glioblastoma is. And um, and then you segue us into it. So this is one of the reasons why I asked you to come here today is to share a little bit about glioblastoma. Um, and as you mentioned, it affects men primarily, but you said in the third and fourth decade. That right. is a 30 and 40 year old, you guys. Like, I don't want that that fat to just kind of slip away. Right. So not to bring about a spirit of fear, right? So I'm glad that you you started us with that about breaking the spirit of fear. But right. it really is about education. It really is about knowing. Because oftentimes, as people, we push signs and symptoms to the side. As you mentioned, a lot of stuff is subjective. So, right. you know, someone grueling through say, no, 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 it doesn't hurt so bad. But you're still having problems just the same. And what I want the takeaway to be is that when you are experiencing signs and symptoms of whatever caliber, they should be noted, they should be documented, and they should be ran past your physician. Um, and as if you notice the symptoms are getting worse, then that should hustle your feet a little bit to get into the doctors and speak up about it sooner than later. And um, so let's let's just let's just get into Tammy and Tony's story for just a bit. Sure. Tammy and Tony's story actually starts as a love story. So they yes. they met as teenagers. And my understanding is they met at the mall. Yes. Um, as teenagers. And she meets him and they have they exchange, you know, have this brief exchange and she goes home and she tells her mother that I've met my husband. Consequently, he goes home and tells his father, I've met my wife. And so after that, they somehow somebody goes to a cookout or something or goes to somebody's house, you know, um, and they become Tammy and Tony. And it's funny because you kind of say say their names in one, like, you know, like it yeah. all goes together. Yeah. And so, um, you know, marriage came, life came, children came. And so um, it was always Tammy and Tony. And so in February, I think in January, I, I want to say, of 2020, <clears throat> Tony experienced a seizure um, in the home, and it was a pretty, you know, a pretty significant seizure that prompted Tammy to dial 911. And so, um, of course, he is transported to the hospital. <clears throat> At this time, we really don't know, uh, you know, just a diagnosis. Um, Tammy calls me to share this information, I'll be real honest with you, is that I thought of glio the first time because I work in hospice and palliative care. And what 40 some year old male just all the just all of a sudden all of a sudden has is found having a seizure. And so, but that was just in the back just because this is I this is the, the space that I'm always in. And so um anyway after you know, after diagnosis and, you know, um, all of the, the things that, that we do, it was discovered that he had a glio. <clears throat> he had a glioblastoma. And um, he went through the treatments. Um, I'm not sure if he did radiation, but he did go through all of all of the treatments and, and all of the modalities related to glio. And of course, Miss Tammy was always in nurse mode as we spoke of earlier. Um, and, and she was nurse, nurse, everything, nurse wife, <laughs> nurse wife mode um, throughout yeah. this entire journey for yeah. her. And then as we know, you know, as these, um, these tumors and these diseases go from serious to terminal illness, you know, you just have to be there. It's a tough journey, but it's a realistic journey. And so um, because I was in that space, so I am in that space during 
Tammy and Tony's journey, you know, I was speaking to Tammy about palliative care. And at first she was somewhat resistant, which is okay, because everybody has their time and their and, 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 and when it is appropriate for you. My, my, my thing is always, here's the information. When you need it, you, you, you use it. But I'm always at that, that space as well as I don't want you to use it too late. You can always have the information, but then if it comes too late, then it's really not, it doesn't have any, the positive impact that it can have. And so um, she did. So Tammy was great. She did palliative care for a while. And then as time went on, um, and I will say that Tony's journey was somewhat of a longer journey than anticipated yeah. because he was diagnosed in 2020. He transitioned in 2023. Mm -hmm. And so, um, which is a, when, when we, you know, on an average mm -hmm. time from diagnosis to, to, to transition, he was really on this end of it, of the, of that transitioning phase. And so Tammy opted, Tammy and Tony, because I, I have to say is he was part of this decision making as well. And so, and then after palliative care, <clears throat> um, they opted for um, hospice, yeah. hospice services to come in into the home, which was great um, because then it gave and 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 the information that I kind of you know Tammy and I had multiple conversations, and but one of those included just allowing hospice to do what hospice does, mm -hmm. um, and allow you to be the wife yes. that you need to be. And that Tony wants you to be. Mm -hmm. He understands that you are a nurse and a wonderful nurse and you're there. But during this time, I need you to be a wife. And I need you to feel as a wife. Because we get into the task of being a nurse that we kind of put, yes. you know, our role of our personal role as wife. And, you know, we can share this across the board. Wife, mother, mm -hmm. you know, daughter, mm -hmm. sister, all that. Um, but I need you to be the wife and let the folk come in, <laughs> the expertise come in and do what they do because they do it and they do it well. Yeah. And um, and so Tammy was able to do that. And, and, and it was a, a peaceful, I will say it was a peaceful transition. Now, was his journey, he had his journey. You know, and there were symptoms related to his journey. And, you know, we had the ups and we had the downs and we had, you know, we had everything in between. Um, but the transition piece of it um, was peaceful. Yeah. And because um, he was able to transition at home. And that's a beautiful thing. And we know that research actually supports that most people do want to transition at home. Unfortunately, most of those people do not mm -hmm. get the opportunity to, to, to do that. But fortunately, Tammy was able to be with Tony um, at the end in their home um, um, with their children. Um, so that was a beautiful um, thing. So that was Tammy and Tony's story. And I will say that that love story. Mm -hmm from the age of 15 or 16 when they were at the mall that went into 2020 and 2023 continues today because that love story continues because Tammy took that love story and is taking that love story to an entirely different level and saying, look, this is my story. Mm -hmm. But this isn't the end of my story. Yes. And so the love that she has for others, the love that she has for the community will continue. We want it to continue. And it continues through the Anthony Lewis Foundation for Brain Tumors. And so that's what gets me excited. That's what gets the other board members excited mm -hmm. is that we know the love story. Yeah. We know the love story. And so I want to be able to share that story across the board because it truly is a love story. It and is. So, um, so, so the story 
continues. <laughs> continues. Yeah, I love that. I love it. We put the dot, dot, dot behind it because it is Absolutely. a continuation. And I do have to say that I never personally met Tony, uh, but I met Tony through Tammy. Right, right. <laughs> and I love Tony through Tammy. And their story, their strength, their resilience is definitely one that anyone who hears will connect to. So that is one of the reasons why I thought it was so impactful to bring that story as we are on the Heal Her journey. And sometimes life gives us these curveballs. Sometimes it hits us when we least expect it. But to know that there is still beauty that can come from the ashes. So I thank you for being here as a representative to help tell the Tammy and Tony story. And we've got to talk about the Anthony Lewis uh, Foundation for Brain Tumors. Give us a little snippet about that and tell us how we can support. Absolutely. Please, please um, go to www.alfbt.org. Um, the Anthony Lewis Foundation for Brain Tumors is there to, to provide education and to provide resources for families and for patients that are living or have lived with, um, with glioblastoma. We are a network of resources to just support Mm -hmm. um, individuals as they are going through, through the journey. Um, we help financially, um, but we also help with resources because people just don't know who do I reach out to? How do I do those things? Mm -hmm. um, because oftentimes when it hits, it hits. So glio is one of those diseases that um, I'm up today, journey starts in the morning. And it's just that it's just that quick. And as we shared earlier, is these are oftentimes working individuals. Mm -hmm. So then if 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 I'm going through this, then people can't work or work is 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 minimal or you know, just it can affect and impact the entire family. And so the foundation is there not only for the patients, but also for, for the families. And as I said, just to provide education education resources and and support so we there is a if you go to our website you learn more about tammy and tony um but then you also we have an opportunity to donate because we know with without funds mm -hmm. the work is very minimal we can't do the work yeah. and you'll be surprised of how many people have reached out um and just have asked what can I do? And we want to be a support to many Americans, you know, as, as much as we can. And so please go to the website to um, support by donating. There's also an opportunity, it states a, a charity um, section. And then we mentioned the Nurse Boss Summit, yes. uh, which is in March. And so within the Nurse Boss Summit, there is a gala. Every year there's a gala within the Nurse Boss Summit. That gala is to support the Anthony Lewis Foundation for Brain Tumors. And so when you see the Nurse Boss Summit, if you, if you do not want to attend the actual summit, mm -hmm. there's an opportunity for you to attend the gala and to support the gala financially. I love it. Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you, I don't normally do this on my platform, but this is such an impactful and and just imagine being in the situation personally and not knowing where to go who to turn to what resources so now you're on a learning curve now you're trying to learn as you are going through so just imagine if we can help families who are going through. And, and like you mentioned, just let them be Absolutely. the the individual, whether it's the wife, the son, the daughter, the mother, the cousin, the great, just let them be the loved one. Mm -hmm. And then there is an organization that helps to support and connect and takes care of the not so easy yeah to mesh into. So it is through Tammy's experience as a nurse 
um, as a businesswoman that this foundation developed, but it also developed from the love story, Correct. the place of love and the nurturing and the support of your loved one, no matter what. So um, I ask everyone who is watching, please just take a look at the website and consider. And just consider. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I just say, look at the information and then consider. And I also want to encourage everyone to share this message out because you never know. People are not going to just come to you and say, oh, guess what? This is what's going on. So we want to make certain that we're spreading this important information so that it's there. Like Dewan said, just in case you need it. You may not need it if you never need it to God be the glory. But just in case we want it to be out there. So again, Dewan, I thank you so much because this is not an easy to st a story to tell. And I thank you for coming to be the representative for the Anthony Lewis Foundation for Brain Tumors. So you all have the information. The information is in the description box. Please make certain you take advantage and you take a look. See if there's a way that you can support. Now, we got to lighten this up again because I tell you, I want to curl up in a ball right now. Uh, Dewan, let us know how we can connect with you and all of the great work that you're out here in these nursing streets doing. <laughs> Absolutely. I am on Facebook and at Dewan Thompson Kelsey. I am on um, Instagram at Dewan Kelsey One, LinkedIn as Vital Care of Greensboro. So um, feel free to hit me up. I actually have a consulting that 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 Merle's consulting uh, is in the infancy stages of it, but to just kind of share and to help folks navigate yeah. that entire yeah. end of life process. Yeah. Um, we get scared about end of life. Um, but we don't need to be. And so my objective is to remove that fear. I understand that fear. I'm very familiar with that fear. But when you remove that fear and you find freedom, then you are able to make those informed decisions that will have that will have a positive impact, not only on you personally, but on your family and on the community. And then, you know, when things five 20 years from now, you can look back and say, I still did the right thing despite of what the situation was in front of me. So anyway, I am, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, thank you for allowing us to speak about the Anthony Lewis Foundation for Brain Tumors. Please reach out to the website, reach out to us. Um, we are here for you. Trust me, we are here for you. We are nurses. So it's always nurses behind the scenes. So we are always on duty. Um, so I, I appreciate you and I look forward to spending more time with you in the future. Yes, because Dewan, we do need to have you come back. I do want you to come back and I want you to, sh we're going to talk more about end of life because I just think we need to have these types of discussions before we're knee deep in it. So um, I definitely want to welcome you back to the show as we continue to support like you said, nurses are always behind the scenes. So if I have a platform, I want to try to utilize it to support and encourage and connect as many as people as possible. Thank you again, Dewan, for showing up. Hang out for just a second. Let me give the people their marching orders. Everybody breathe. Take a sip of your water, dry your eyes. It is all good. God is good. He's got this situation in his hands. But I do want to make certain, let me put that back up there for anybody who straggled in a little late. I want to make certain you have the information about the Anthony Lewis Foundation for Brain Tumors. Uh, make certain you go to the website. That's www.alfbt.org 
org. So make certain you check that out and get the information and tune into the love story because it indeed does continue. Um, I love you, Tammy Lewis, um, and I'm praying for you and your family continuously. So you all have a um, Make certain you share this out. I'm so discombobulated. Make certain you share this out. You subscribe to the channel. You support the vision. 